wanna stay here now Ain't gonna keep it low now If you wanna go, let's go Let's wrap it up and hit the road I just got an awesome vibe Striking the wind of hopes now Liberty's on my mind We've taken off, we've left the ground You You gotta understand That we get one chance, one chance Welcome to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney and in today's video we are going to be doing some Dollar Tree DIY lemon decor perfect for summer so stay tuned. So I have to admit this is the first year that I've jumped on the lemon train. I haven't really decorated for summer other than patriotic before but I am loving the lemons this year. Let's get started. So three of these four projects go together super well. You can style them in a variety of different ways. And the first one I'm gonna do is this lemon slice charger. So this started with a wood charger from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever kind of charger that you have or want to use. And I used this maze by Waverly that I got from Walmart. And I started by painting two coats onto the plate. Once those two coats were dry, then it was time to paint. I was a little apprehensive about this because I am not a artsy person in the sense of drawing. I'm crafty, but I don't consider myself artsy. So I was hoping that this would work out, but I wasn't sure. So I grabbed an image from Pinterest to use as a guide and I got some fancier paintbrushes from Michaels so I could make some straighter lines. I love Dollar Tree paintbrushes, but for somebody like me that doesn't have the skill already, it was not in my favor to go that route. So once I painted a white circle just with some acrylic paint around the outside, I went and found the center with a measuring tape and then made a circle by spinning my brush like that. Then I made a line horizontally, vertically, and then split those so that it kind of looked like you were cutting a pie. And then I curved each edge to the other one. So then that way it started to make the little pieces that you see inside of a lemon. I tried to take it in simple steps. So then that way I didn't get overwhelmed. And so then after that, I went through with that same white acrylic paint and filled in between the outside white line and the little curved white lines. The reason I'm using acrylic paint, if anybody is wondering, instead of my favorite, favorite Waverly chalk paint, it's literally because I cannot find it at any Walmart near me. Every time I try to order it on pickup, they swap it out with wax, and then also anytime that I go in to find it, they do not have white. So if you have found white Waverly chalk paint, I am so jealous of you, and that is why. <laughs> After painting that, I went in and curved the bottom of my little slices just so then that looked a little bit more realistic to me. And then I wanted to make the pieces a little bit bigger, but I didn't want them all to be the same color. So I mixed a little bit of the maize yellow paint and a little bit of the white acrylic. I went around the outside just to kind of clean up that circle. And it covered really well because usually if you mix white acrylic paint with any type of paint, it just helps make it fit less see-through. And then I went through with that same color and made the edges a lot wider. I really liked that I did this with a lighter color because with the groove of the charger, it looked like it was like that anyway. And also too, I liked this project because if I messed up, I could go back through with white paint or yellow paint or whatever it happened to be and clean it up. And so then after I had those outer pieces of my wedge where I wanted them, I went through and just did some lines of that kind of white with yellow paint. And then I went through and added three seeds and I just freehanded those around the outside. After a couple more touch-ups, I just let it sit. And then once it was dry overnight, I put it on this Dollar Tree plate stand and I love it. I see it and I'm so proud of it. It is definitely not perfect. I am not a super, super great painter, but especially in a vignette like this, I think it looks awesome given my artistic or non-artistic background. Up next, we're gonna make this cute little lemon farm sign. 
And this one is made out of this kitchen measurement sign. I grabbed it a while back, so you can use any type of Dollar Tree sign that you have. If it's not a black chalkboard color already, you can paint the entire sign or the back of the sign. But here I wanted to leave the outside similar to what I did in a recent patriotic style video. So I will link that video if you're interested in that sign as well. But I went through, did the same thing. I covered up all of the wording with my black Waverly chalk paint. The color is called ink and let that dry and it melded pretty well. It looked like everything kind of matched. So then this SVG file is a mixture of something I customized and then also one I bought off Etsy. So I will link the one I purchased down below. So then that way, if you're interested in doing this, you can purchase it. For some reason, I had a heck of a time. Usually with SVGs, you should be able to line stuff up and I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was operator error. So if you buy the SVG, you will have no problem. It was just me, mom brain, I don't know, but it <laughs> didn't want to cooperate. So then I added all of my different pieces that I cut out with my Cricut. And I also loved that I customized it with Mr. Finn's Lemon Farm. We have a lot of stuff with our last name on it, but I wanted something that felt personal to our family, but also didn't have our name on it everywhere. And then this super cute freshly squeezed lemonade sign has been in other videos. I've gotten questions about it. And so I wanted to show you how I made it and also give you a Dollar Tree way to make it. So you can make it with one of these golf games. I've made signs with this before. You're gonna wanna go ahead and hit it with your favorite stain before we start this process. I ended up having the scrap wood on hand, so that's how I made mine. I went into Canva and created a stencil with my Cricut. Like always, I will link this artwork down below for you because I made it if you would like to grab it and make your own sign. Once it was all weeded, I used my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl that you guys always ask about kind of what transfer tape we're using. So I'll link that down below as well. And then I went through with some white Waverly chalk paint. This was before I ran out. And then I just went over the lemon portion with some yellow. I did the white layer first because it really helped the yellow pop. Sometimes the yellow with the dark stain wouldn't pop if you didn't have that white layer underneath. Then I went through and weeded the whole sign and that was it. Honestly, this I made to go with my Radon stuff, but you could put whatever text you want on there. But this looks super cute on my DIY little tiered tray. So there are those three that look so, so cute together and I love how they ended up in my kitchen. And to finish off this video, I have this mason jar sign. Any country fans out there, if you know country music then, life is short, make it sweet, you probably have heard that line. So for this project, I transformed a fall sign that I had in my stash. Dollar Tree has mason jar signs year round, so you can use whatever you like there. You could also do this not on a mason jar. It's kind of still use what you have at my house for the most part because I had a crazy stash. I bought so much stuff and I'm trying to work my way through it. So step one, disassemble the sign and add some white paint. And then once that dried, I decided to paint a faux buffalo check. I kind of did it in a wonky way. So I will link my how to paint buffalo check video down below and up in the I cards if you're interested in that because the way I did this was really funky, um, but it ended up working out. And honestly, I wanted to share this because not every project I do turns out perfectly every time. I just share the good ones with you guys. So just wanted to have a real crafting moment with you. So once I did my vertical stripes, it peeled off a little bit of the white paint, but I wasn't super concerned about it. I went through again and did some horizontal stripes and then I painted those. Now the reason that I didn't really care about the top part is because I knew I was going to cover it back up to make it look like a mason jar and also I knew I wanted to put some text in the center so I wasn't super concerned about it. Number three, I was really low on painter's tape, just being totally honest. So um, I went through and kind of did this very piecemeal but it worked out. So I covered those different areas and then I didn't worry about the center. I replaced the vertical stripes so that I could go through and get some clean lined squares. I went through with a different yellow, so not the Waverly Maze. I went through with another yellow that I had just in some apple barrel paint and I filled in those squares. And then I also went through and took my tape and added some squares to either side. So then that way it looked like there was buffalo check all the way around behind the wording.
Once that was all painted, I grabbed some just white vinyl to make the center just a white square. You could paint the square white. You could also use some contact paper if you have white contact paper. I just have vinyl coming out the yin yang, so I just decided to use that to kind of level set the background so that I had a clean canvas for my words. So then, like I mentioned, I took just some extra burlap fabric that I had. You could definitely use the burlap from Dollar Tree and some hot glue to glue that on so that the kind of twist on cap of the mason jar was covered in burlap, similar to how the sign came in the first place. And then I just used my scissors to push it around the edge so I didn't burn my fingers off. So then once I did that, I also wanted to frame out the vinyl so then it had a burlap frame. So I just cut out some pieces, pulled off a little bit of the excess so it looked really frayed and kind of country rustic, and then I glued those to frame out the vinyl. Then I created this in a mixture of Canva and Cricut. The lemons are a Cricut image and the words are from Canva. So I will share what I can below, obviously with Cricut paid stuff. You cannot share that, um, but I will share what I can down below. Then I went and stuck that on, same transfer tape I used before, and then I also added the lemons in yellow and the leaves in green to give it a 3D look and to also pop the lemons off the white. I did make the background of the lemons a tad bit bigger so that once I stuck them down, I had an outline. I thought that also gave it a drop shadow look and I liked that it made it pop. So then I hung this on the front door inside my Ikea wreath that I've had for a couple years and I really like this. It's a very summertime. I like the yellow. Yellow is usually not my jam, but this year with the lemons I'm getting into yellow and I like, you know, when you decorate your house year over year, it's nice to kind of expand your horizons. I also really like it without anything around it. You could set it up on a shelf. You could hang it on a wall. There's a lot of different options for these Dollar Tree makeovers. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed all of my lemon decor ideas. Also, if you're into watermelon, strawberries, all of those other fruits, you could definitely customize this for different options. So truly the possibilities are endless. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down below, have you always been on the lemon train for decor or is this a first year for you? Also let me know your favorite DIY down in the comments and hit subscribe so you don't miss a future whiskey and wet video. I will see you guys in the next one, bye.